Good evening. Hello, dear ladies and gentlemen. And I'm glad to see you all here today at our webinar. So, first of all, I should say that this webinar is based on the works of um, the Vedapal's team specialist, Sergei Kasintsev, uh, who is expert in acupuncture and he's a practitioner of acupuncture, PhD, reflexologist, and a specialist of traditional Chinese medicine. Also, he's one of the authors of the Veda Pulse Acupuncture Extension. So, everything that you'll be presented today, including PowerPoint presentation, data schemes, etc., it all was provided by our expert, and I'm here today to voice his ideas and thoughts on the today's topic. And my name is Anastasia, and I'm a specialist of the Veda Pulse Technical Support Team. Hello again. Uh, also, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them, and Sergei Kasintsev, as an expert, uh, will provide you with uh, corresponding answers a bit later on. Okay, let's check our sound. Please type something on chat if you can hear me well. Mm. Just... Thank you, Susan. Okay, great. So, we can start. Today, uh, you'll be presented the following ideas. We're going to describe the structure of a channel system and the methods of interaction with it. Also, you'll be presented main characteristics of the first meridian uh, in the Chinese system, first of the 12 meridians, Lang channel. Uh, we'll describe it projection zones and functional use, as well as power points of this channel and methods of its passing. Okay, uh, today is an important day for us because we are starting to talk about uh, 12 main meridians and biological active points. And sure, uh, some of you who are specialists in acupuncture should know that um, uh, there are also so-called front middle meridian and back middle meridian. And they also have their own biological active points. These two meridians form small celestial circle and uh, 12 other meridians that will be described in our lectures. They form a big celestial circle or great celestial circle, uh, great energy circulation circle. So both these structures can manifest themselves as three components and in Chinese tradition they are called spirit, Xin energy, and substance, UG. You may see it on your screen now. If we are talking about substance and material part, uh, we should mention that it includes not only biological active points, but also projection zones, projection areas. But to influence uh, the whole structure, we apply exactly biological active points. And sure, we can use different methods of influence fingers, needles as the most classical one method, laser devices as the most modern one. But the question here is, why do these biological active points react at any influence? Uh, here we should mention that um, meridians or channels, so these uh, energy lines, they were described a few hundred years ago. But today, modern science has approved and validated these ancient descriptions by finding special zones of a skin resistance, a skin electric resistance. Moreover, today, biological active points even can be visualized by the special method of skin resistance, in particular, electromagnetic spectrum. Um, and modern scientists, they are searching for a special substrate for biological active points. They are eager to define some unique element, but uh, as you may know, they have no success here. And it seems to Sergei Kassinsev that they uh, are not going to have any success here uh, because this system, it's a complete system and very complicated. Mm. So, they know that points give us access to the system of energy. 
uh, we influence them by massage or physiotherapeutic devices. Uh, but um, what do we do in this case? We influence the energy which goes along the meridian. And these points, biological active points, they are like small antennas attracting the energy. And maybe it's not so easy to explain, but uh, it's easy to feel. For example, um, you can do it even now, or you can do it with your clients, with your patient. Uh, just recommend them to relax hands, relax a little bit, and rub them together. Just three or four times it will be enough. Then separate them slowly and bring them together slowly. And you will feel uh, something like an invisible ball in your hands. So Kasintsev supposes it to be a manifestation of the energy. And there is uh, one interesting rule for biological active points. Uh, even a very small physical influence uh, can be, can be a reason of a strong, powerful reply. And uh, even the less physical influences, the stronger energy replies. So points are activated by the energy and they give the reply. All points have particular programs. It means that energy flows uh, in a particular uh, destination to a particular goals. Uh, as an example, we may mention here um, natural movement of magnetic flows between poles of the off. To, to continue our talking, uh, we should say about uh, one interesting moment. Uh, in Chinese language, uh, there is a special uh, hieroglyph. It is called Zin. And it is the same uh, hieroglyph, which means the system and uh, the channel. But uh, you should know that there are different meridians. Uh, there are tendus muscular meridians, main meridians, and others. And talking about the location, uh, they are located uh, one under another. Uh, so uh, they are projection areas. Uh, on the skin surface will be almost the same. So these lines can be like thinner or thicker, but they will be very similar. That's why we can say that a channel is a sum of all meridians that belong to one system. Channel is very close to the meridian, uh, almost the same as meridian, but the concept of channel is a more general concept. Here I'd like to say a few words about our universe and uh, about uh, its construction. It has two parts and uh, everything around us has two parts, as you know, uh, like yin and yang, beginnings in yang basics. Uh, channels are also divided into two groups, yang and yin channels. Yang channels are more active, are more fast. Uh, so if we need a more fast uh, influence, uh, then we should use Yang channels. And it uh, will allow us to redistribute energy in, at a faster pace. In channels are more slow, they are slower. But uh, at the same time, it's interesting that they allow to accumulate energy. And for our practice, it's very important to know the direction of channels. Uh, please look uh, at your screens. Here you can see so-called Pangu scheme. Pangu was uh, our initial primordial ancestor. And the task of this ancestor was to unite, to connect the sky and the earth. He used to be this uh, third element between these two basics. So like all of us today also are this third element between the sky and the earth. So Pangu uh, destroyed it, uh, the initial world egg 
in Chinese mythology. And after uh, this section, we got the sky, Yan, and the earth, Yin. These two opposite um, elements, two opposite basics uh, that uh, keen to each other. If you look at the screen, you will see that Yan channels start at hands and and uh, uh, near the center of the body. Uh, foot Yan channels go from the center to the earth. In channels go uh, in opposite direction. So it's really important to know uh, the direction of channels uh, because energy flow always goes in one direction. And if energy uh, starts going in opposite direction, it is called a syndrome of a backflow of energy. And it has some pathological symptoms also. It's a disorder. For lung channel, uh, among these symptoms uh, will be uh, most cold, for, for example. Channel meridian system is based on the principles of the chronobiology. It means that each system has its own time of activity. Lung channel feels uh, the maximum activity at night between 3 and 5 a.m. Uh, also, it's uh, interesting to know for us that uh, in China, uh, where uh, there is a special measurement system and um, one common unit in this system uh, is equal to two astronomic hours. Uh, so uh, you may see it on your screen. Each channel has uh, two hours of activity. It's like one common unit in traditional uh, Chinese measurement system. This table is for you. Here you can see also yin and yang categories. That's quite comfortable also. Remember that uh, there is also periods of minimal activity of each system and uh, such minimal activity comes in 12 hours after the maximum activity period. So, for example, for lung channel it will be uh, 3 p.m. And also there is a time of rest for each system. Uh, just after the maximum activity, uh, there will be such a period of rest. Uh, like um, for lung channel, it will be after 5 a.m. Uh, take it into consideration, please. Then you are planning your prescription for a patient. Also, there is a special uh, biorhythmic organization during a year and according to the months. Each season is consists of consists of uh, three months and uh, as you may know uh, the start of a year in China um, is connected to uh, February and new year in China starts in February. The first month is the month of tiger and uh, it is connected to the lung channel. The particular date of its beginning is connected to the solar calendar and it is usually um, between the 3rd and the 5th of February. So Chinese New Year, according to uh, moon calendar, falls at uh, January or February. In China, it is called Spring Day or Spring Holiday. So, uh, you can see that each channel has a maximum activity periods during the year also. At this slide, you can see uh, the name of the lung channel uh, in Chinese tradition. Uh, let's look at it. Uh, the first thing here is um, P 
be uh, it's uh, like um, like a name like a short name of the lung channel uh, in French tradition that uh, is used quite common here in Russia for example uh, the next one is uh, L U it's uh, just for lungs and it is an English tradition of naming and then Chinese tradition, you can see shou. Shou means hand. Uh, then you see shou in the name of a channel. It means that this channel starts or ends at the hands. Then after it, uh, you can see tai. Tai means great or celestial. Uh, here it is in. It means uh, this channel belongs to in category. Also, it can be belong to yan category, uh, so in or yan. Then fei, fei is for lungs in Chinese, and then zin. Zin, uh, as we have already mentioned, means channel or meridian. So it depends on the general context. What's important that uh, all main meridians have pairs. Uh, if you look just at the picture here, a picture of a woman, you will see only uh, external curves of a channel. So it's uh, zones where biological active points are. Uh, don't pay attention to the red and blue lines. It's just a design, just a design. But uh, what is important? It's important for our practice to know also inner curves of a channel. If we are talking about lung channel, we should mention that uh, it is the first channel, it starts movement of all 12 meridians. And one can initiate uh, energy flows with its help. And uh, if it is OK, um, all other systems work much better. Uh, lung channel starts uh, with the inner curves at the middle heater. This starting point is projected along the anterior middle line at the middle of the distance between navel and xiphoid process. You can try to find it now uh, if you'd like, uh, between navel and xiphoid process. Uh, then imagine it goes down to the navel and goes about it, turns it, and rises. Uh, goes through the chest and abdominal cavity, contacts uh, the heart and lungs, goes up to the vocal cords. Uh, by the way, uh, lung power, waste quality depends on this channel status. If you need to work with a vocal apparatus, voice box, uh, you can use also lung channel biological active points. And then it comes down from the throat and appears in the first point, then goes uh, superficially to the clavicle and to the shoulder. Uh, if we are talking about hands, then um, you can see it goes as the slide shows. In the direction of the thumb along the inner hand surface, then it stops at the thumb snail root uh, and it includes uh, 11 points and we'll study the main ones today. Uh, here you can see the concept uh, called tie-in. It means belonging to the in system. This system includes three levels. Uh, the second triple at the bottom of your screen. Yan meridians uh, also consist of three parts. In Chinese tradition, uh, it is called Liu He or six harmonies. Uh, in Russian literature, there is no uh, particular translation for this um, concept. Um, sometimes they are called uh, energy axis uh, or uh, big meridian sometimes, but there is no one term for it. 
So correspondingly, Yan and Yin channels harmonize each other and form this axis uh, to protect uh, us from the external um, pathogenic energies. So initially, external and pathogenic energy meets a uh, Yan axis, as you can see it on the slide. Uh, it will be urinary bladder and small intestine, then it will be gallbladder and triple heater, stomach and uh, large intestine. And it's interesting that if this uh, pathogenic, uh, basic pathogenic energy overcomes Yan level, uh, only after that the uh, in level uh, starts participating in um, protecting function but it is not intended for it and it cannot be so successful as the Yan one. Then uh, you can see lungs, spleen, liver, pericardium, kidney and heart uh, they are also mm, starting to be involved. Uh, in Chinese literature there is a special concept it is called Shao Yin and uh, it says that if the pathogenic energy go, goes all this way and uh, initial uh, and finally comes to kidney and heart uh, then a man should die in three days after it it is called Shao Yin so you can see these meridians that we just enumerated, they should be full to protect us from the external pathogenic energy. Each channel belongs to a particular system. Our device Veta Pulse allows us uh, to compare channels in Chinese and Vedic traditions. So it's like um, viewing them from different points of view. And though these uh, systems are similar, they are not the same. And please remember that uh, these systems uh, have been forming in different countries at a different time, so uh, they are not totally the same. And there are peculiarities. Uh, what are they? Uh, they are more about our purposes than they are using this uh, traditions, this knowledge. For example, uh, from Chinese point of view, lung channel belongs to the metal element and it is in channel. Its paired uh, yang channel uh, will be large intestine channel and it is also Mm, belongs to the metal element. If we are talking about Vedic tradition in the system of three doshas, lungs and large intestine, they are also paid organs and uh, they belong to vata category, to vata dosha. So let's look in details what particular characteristics uh, lung channel has and what uh, is its functional use. Uh, here you can see the main characteristics of our lung channel and uh, they are in order of importance on your screen now. So the basic thing about um, the basic thing um, about it uh, will be the first one responsible for directing C downwards and dispelling it. But the main idea of uh, the channel system is that uh, the system has the common um, the common idea and each element of the system also he have also has its key idea uh, if you know that that the system has the main purpose the main idea and each element inside it has its own key point then it's easy for you to choose points uh, in prescription for each patient. And here is the main is uh, about directing it downwards and dispelling it. 
uh, you know that energy comes to us with uh, breathing, with uh, nourishment, with food, and from our environment directly. Uh, you remember that we discussed concept uh, of the sky and the earth, and uh, uh, the humanity as a third element between them. So lungs, uh, they can mm, they can direct uh, our energy downwards. And if we are talking about energy of breathing, then uh, it will be about oxygen. Uh, you should know that lungs uh, is the uh, highest in organ. So it is located at the highest level among all in organs. You remember that in organs uh, they are good for accumulating, accumulating energy. So lungs are really unique. They take this energy and they bring it um, not only to in organs but at the same time to young organs. Also they can dispel this energy, energy of breathing. Uh, it's one of the concepts of Chinese literature, you know, like energy of breathing. Sometimes it's also called chest energy. So we dispel it and each cell of our body gets it. And if there are any disorders, any pathologies connected to the lack of blood circulation or lack of uh, oxygen uh, nutrition of our tissues, then it's very good to use points of the lung channel. And from the European point of view, biological active points of lung channel influence our breathing, uh, our cardiovascular system. Also, they can influence our excretory system because you remember that the large intestine is a paired organ of lungs. So, if there is no measured smooth breathing by your patient, uh, then uh, you can be sure that there will be problem with excretory system of the, this person. Uh, each energy system uh, has a particular point of uh, application. Uh, it opens in particular point uh, at our body. For lungs channel, it will be nose. Also, let's go next. You can see mirror of this channel is skin and it's adnexus. Now, adnexus uh, are hair and uh, our nails. Then goes emotions, mental manifestation. Why it is about sadness and melancholy. Uh, you remember that it is connected to the metal element and metal element is always connected to some uh, self-concentration, some self-searching, uh, that's why such emotions are mentioned here. Uh, please look at your screen, here are the main points that you should pay attention to. First of all, you can see uh, they are points uh, of basic elements. Each channel uh, has uh, points of all five basic elements. And for lung channel, uh, they are here, you can see. It is also called system of five shoe points. The first is uh, at the tips of fingers. Uh, the second is a bit upper, uh, the, the third one, uh, it is also Yuan point, so-called Yuan point, and it is connected to the pre-celestial um, initial energy, and uh, it has a very important uh, regulatory function. Mm, uh, point number four, it's necessary to remember. Uh, we'll, discuss, we'll discuss it a bit later. And point number five uh, is always at the area of your elbow or sometimes it can be in the area of a knee for different channels. 
So please look at the screen. Point uh, which is called P10 and uh, which is connected to a fire element. Then um, if we are talking about the earth element, then uh, this point will be stimulating. It is marked here as P9 uh, and as a tone, uh, like means tonic, tonic point for lung channel. You may remember that in the system, which is called USIN, system of elements, uh, the earth gives birth to the metal element. Uh, metal element uh, here uh, brings the point P8, and uh, you can see it is called here EE, which means the element in the element. You should know that metal gives birth to water, and uh, uh, there is even one interesting proverb about it. Uh, it's, uh, it sounds like there is always a drop of dew at the blade of Damascus steel. So it shows us the connection between metal and water, a drop of dew at the steel. So in the concept, uh, mother element uh, gives uh, powers uh, in giving birth to a child. So uh, water here will be a sedative point uh, for lung channel as a result. It's also marked uh, within brackets like sedative, you can see. Uh, the next one uh, which is mentioned here, it's a gap point. Gap point is the most narrow place in the channel of meridian. And uh, in this place exactly um, the congestion will appear mostly. So the narrowest place, the most narrow place, uh, and you can watch a congestion in this zone. It's not a rare case. You know, often just to estimate the status of meridian, we need to palpate only a few points. And uh, in the sum of information from these points, uh, we can get a lot of useful knowledge about the whole meridian. Then uh, you can see uh, gap point here, it, it is P6. Uh, it is uh, an algetic point for our lung channel. And if uh, there is any congestion, then uh, it will appear exactly at this point, because it's a gap point. Uh, to know um, more about regulation, uh, you should palpate a uh, so-called yuan point. You can see it is a shu free point here, or earth point. Also, the point which is called uh, the element in the element gives us a lot of useful information about uh, energy level of the channel. And uh, there are um, two more specific points for diagnosis of a channel. They are called more and true points. More point uh, can be located uh, on the own channel. As uh, you can see it here, it is uh, P1, so the first point of the lung channel. It belongs to the lung channel. But if we are talking about shoe points, then we should say that all shoe points are located uh, at the back uh, on the channel of uh, urinary bladder. A shoe point of a lung channel, uh, it is the point number 13. Also, low point is important. Here, low point will be the point uh, number seven in the lung channel. It connects uh, channels according to the ideas of acupuncture. So, correspondingly, we can see here its combination according to the idea of yin and yang uh, to the channel of the large intestine. So, uh, this table is quite useful for practice 
and Sergei Kasinsev recommends you just to get it. Uh, uh, we'll we'll have such tables about each channel in our series of webinar um, because it's very important to know these points for each channel uh, to find them and to know them uh, because these five points are, are quite enough to work with a patient even uh, at the first level and uh, these points are very powerful they can help you to uh, to treat your patient Sure, you shouldn't forget about other points, uh, but you can use them as uh, some additional one, additional ones. Now let's go on. Let's go on to the power points of the lung channel. Uh, you can try to find it to your body if you'd like now. So the first point uh, will be a bit complicated maybe because not uh, every person can touch it but uh, normally a healthy person should can do it. You can see it is point number 13. That's it. You can try to touch it now if you'd like. Uh, where it is located? It is located uh, between transverse processes of the third and the fourth uh, dorsal vertebrae. So find the most outstanding process uh, below your neck. Mm, it will be the seventh uh, neck vertebrae. And just under it, uh, where will be mm, the first, the second, the third uh, thoracic vertebrae. Then, if you go uh, a little bit lower and aside between spinous processes, then you will feel the diagnostic point for young energy in the lung channel. Uh, pay attention to the point uh, P1 or uh, the first point of lung channel. It is red here. Uh, it is located uh, in the area under your clavicle. To find it, uh, you should relax your hand and put your relaxed hand on the opposite shoulder. Then you should try to feel it under your fingers, uh, just under the uh, index uh, or under the middle finger. Uh, it will be like outstanding part of your clavicle. And uh, after you touch this outstanding part, then you should go down, uh, go down, and you will feel uh, a small fossa, a deepening. And there will be uh, the second point. If you go down and just uh, one rib down this fossa, there will be point number one. Um, the rib is really hard, it's easy to feel it. And just after the rib, uh, it will be a, a more softer area. Uh, the next point is point number five. That's it. And it is located uh, in the area of your uh, elbow bend. If you bend your elbow at 90 degrees, uh, it will be easy for you to find. Try to find it uh, from the side of your thumb. Try to just bend a little bit your elbow and you will feel the tenders of your biceps. So this point uh, will be from the outer side of your uh, tenders of biceps. 
in the bend of your elbow. It will be a very sensitive point. It is necessary um, for us um, to know it because it's a good um, starting point to find all the other points. The next point uh, which we should describe, the next point of the lung channel, it is point number nine. It is located in the area of the wrist joint. Uh, normally, there should be like a little fold there. If there is no fold, by uh, a patient, just ask him to bend uh, the wrist joint a little bit to see this fold. So the end of this fold, uh, like a deepening between bones, it will be exactly the place of location of the point number nine in the lung channel. And if you imagine uh, the line connecting point number five and point number nine, uh, then you can imagine uh, there all the other points are located. Uh, all the other points just except of the point number seven. Uh, it doesn't belong to this Im imaginary line. So we need points number six, number seven, number eight. You can see here um, a system of measurement also on the slide. That's it. Uh, and um, it is equal to 12 tsun. Tsun is a proportional cut and it's traditional Chinese measurement system. It is connected to individual parameters of the body and it's very comfortable to use this Tsun system just to find biological active points. Uh, you can try to use it if you still don't. So, for example, here uh, you should divide uh, this uh, distance between point number five and point number nine uh, like uh, in a half. Here, this distance is equal to 12 tsun. Uh, a half, it will be 6 tsun. And just add uh, 1 sixth mm, closer to the elbow joint. So, exactly, it, it will be exactly the place uh, where in the projection of a bone you can feel the point number 6 of a lung channel. Point number 6 of a lung channel. Here it is. Uh, if your lung channel is okay and if there is no disorder in the lung channel, uh, then uh, this point uh, will be just a normal point. But uh, if, if there is any congestion or other disorder connected to the lung channel, then this point will be very painful. Uh, in this case, uh, just um, try to touch it a little bit um, uh, along the course of a channel. It's very important to do it along the course of a channel, along the flow of energy. Uh, as you remember, uh, in hand channel goes in the direction to your fingers. And if you will touch it in this direction uh, slightly, then it will help you to um, to renew the energy flow in the meridian, in the meridian of lungs. Uh, and uh, as far as lung uh, channel can help to initiate, to start the great uh, circle of energy circulation, so uh, this will be very useful for you to influence uh, the whole energy movement in our meridians. So pay attention to these points, whether it is painful or not, uh, then you are making a diagnosis of the lung channel. Uh, so it's time to discuss the point number seven. Uh, it is the point uh, which is the hardest to find but we should know how to do it. Uh, it is called uh, Le Dieu in Chinese tradition. 
which means uh, outstanding, standing out of range. So to, to find it, uh, we should move from our wrist. And just after your wrist, from the side of the thumb, uh, you can feel, you should feel such a thickening. Uh, it will be a steloid process. So after you find it, just go on and uh, go along the edge of the bone. And a bit lower, um, a bit means about uh, one uh, centimeter and a half or two centimeters, uh, then you will feel a ribbing, ribbing or roughness at your bone. It will be like very slight greatness. The next point that we are going to discuss, it is point number eight, and it is located uh, in the opposite direction. It is opposite uh, to the steloid process. It is located just uh, uh, under the wrist. Uh, you should uh, try to find uh, the outstanding part of the bone and uh, it will be uh, at the place uh, where the pulsation uh, of artery is. Uh, it is, by the way, one of the points uh, for pulse diagnosis. The next point that we should mention, it is point number 10. It is located uh, on your hand and uh, it will be near the center. center. To find it, uh, you should um, divide your bone uh, into parts like um, half, like a, a half way and exactly a half way from the palm surface you can find this point. Uh, the next the next point yes that's it the point number 10 you can see halfway. Let's go on. The next point, uh, it will be point uh, number 11. It is the final point here for us. And it is located, uh, you can see it is located uh, near the nail root. If you imagine two lines uh, going through the base of the nail root and uh, going along its uh, side surface, um, then uh, in their intersection point you can find uh, this point number 11 of the lung channel. Uh, by the way, often then you are influencing uh, biological active points um, near nails, uh, these final points, uh, we can use uh, our nails just to press them. But uh, please be careful here. Um, skin is very sensitive, it's very thin here, so it should be really slight uh, pressure uh, to avoid such disorders as paranychia or something like that. So be, just be careful, please. Uh, okay, mm, thank you very much. Uh, that was the main part uh, about uh, points of lung channel. Not all points, but uh, the main one. And we are going to continue in a few minutes, just uh, a two minutes break. And uh, I am waiting for you back just to continue the second part of our webinar. Thank you.
and thank you for staying with us. We are continuing and please don't forget that uh, you're welcome to ask any questions and um, be sure our expert uh, will not leave them without answers. So uh, let's continue. Uh, we uh, had a talk about the main points of LAN channel. Uh, now it's time to look at the connection of the LAN channel to other systems, ties of the LAN channel. It is mostly about um, from uh, what places this channel takes energy and to what places it brings energy. Uh, usually uh, to talk about ties of the channel, we are working in the system which is called USIN system. It is the system of five elements. You can see it on your screen now, uh, on the left part of your screen. And according to this system of five elements, uh, our lungs uh, are connected energetically to the large intestine. Uh, and uh, you remember that uh, it's a partner in the metal element. Um, for us here and uh, also uh, we uh, have said previously that uh, low point for LAN channel uh, it is point number seven here it is marked as P7 so it could be marked as LU7 like lungs uh, it is the same it means seven point or uh, seventh point of the LAN channel so this point uh, is connected uh, to the point number four of the large intestine channel and it will be a yuan point. Uh, then the energy in the uh, point uh, number nine of the LAN channel uh, which is located uh, at the wrist uh, it also is one of the points uh, where the energy flows. But uh, for us, uh, this connection, this energy connection, this energy flow between uh, point number seven of the LAN channel and point number four of the large intestine channel uh, is uh, more important because it's more active and uh, you can use exactly this idea because uh, it includes um, includes uh, a high level of activity of energy. First six points um, bring energy to the large intestine to the point number nine and then number nine and then uh, this energy flows along the meridian, uh, then there will be point number 10, number 11, and uh, after that, after going through point number 10, number 11, uh, the energy uh, gets the system of large intestine. So, uh, pay attention to this uh, energy connection, because it's quite uh, good and uh, it's like a more active connection for us. Uh, there is also one rule in the system USIN, in the system of five elements. And uh, this rule is called uh, mother and the son rule. And according to this rule, mother and son, according to this relation, our lungs belong to the metal element, as you remember. It means that they can give their energy uh, to the water element. Uh, here I've got one question for you. If you'd like, you can answer in chat now. So how do you think um, whether our, lung, our lungs give energy to kidney or to urinary bladder? Mm, please, if you'd like, you may answer it. So. Our lungs, metal element, can share their energy with the one uh, water element. What it would be? 
kidney or urinary bladder? How do you suppose? Any ideas? Okay, we've got one answer. Here is one rule. Please pay attention to it. Energy always uh, is brought to its own element. So, uh, lungs uh, to its own category, uh, like yin or yang category. And lungs, uh, they are in organ. So lungs can bring their energy to another in organ. And uh, what is in organ here? It is kidney. So lungs, they can also take uh, the energy from another in organ from the mother element, from the earth. And uh, here, if we are talking about earth elements, uh, then uh, spleen uh, will belong to in category. So you can see uh, lungs uh, can share energy to kidney as a in organ, and then also lungs uh, can uh, take uh, the energy uh, from uh, the mother earth element from uh, the spleen just according to their belonging to the same in category so uh, please remember because it's not always possible just to take the energy and uh, redirect it uh, from in organ to yang organ so it's mostly very important for us to know uh, which organs belong to in or which belong to yang category. Let's go on. Here you can see the great circle of energy circulation, our 12 meridians. And uh, here the rule uh, of uh, mother-son relationship uh, will be also valid. Uh, in this case here, lungs you can see lungs uh, they uh, share their energy uh, to the last channel and uh, they as a mother uh, they share energy uh, with the sun and in this case it will be a channel of a large intestine the last channel channel of a large intestine Uh, the system of liver, uh, like in the mother category, uh, also uh, can interact here uh, due to another rule, uh, uh, which is called a rule of uh, up and down or the rule of uh, midnight and midday. Uh, you remember that we were talking about biorhythms. Uh, and about times of minimal and maximum activity. So here it's well it also. You remember that uh, lungs are the most active at three or five uh, at the period since uh, three to five uh, a.m. in the morning. And in this time, uh, the urinary bladder will feel the period of uh, minimum activity. They are connected according to the ideas of biorhythmology. And lungs, uh, they can share uh, their energy um, because they feel the period of uh, maximum activity, maximum level of energy at the time. So they can share it. And if you'd like to use this option, you should use low points in the system of urinary bladder. 
in the daytime, uh, you can uh, add some energy to your lungs uh, and use to this purpose the energy of the uh, urinary bladder system. So it's like uh, interconnection and you can use it uh, in both directions, uh, like uh, from one organ to another. Uh, and it works in double direction. Uh, the thing that you should know that uh, energy can leave the channel uh, in the moment of the maximum activity of this channel. And also the rule of up and down um, is valid for uh, Ayurvedic uh, ideas. Uh, it works um, according to Ayurvedic constitution. So all organs uh, that are located um, nearby, they belong to one element. And uh, in Ayurvedic system, it's just like the same. Uh, organs that are allocated nearby, they belong to particular doshas, uh, vata, pita, kapha. And when uh, we are using biorhythmological rules, uh, then uh, we can see uh, the interconnections uh, as inside one dosha. For example, here, if we are talking about lungs, uh, lungs, lungs, uh, and colon or large intestine, uh, they can interact uh, the kidney and urinary bladder. Opposite, uh, they are interconnected, and all these uh, channels they belong to one dosha and uh, you can see it is vata. Uh, here you may see the legend, uh, yellow for vata, red for pita and blue for hapha. So uh, it's really important for us to find these uh, corresponding moments, uh, to find these algorithms not only um, to restore the balance of our meridians, but also to pay attention to doshas and to balance our doshas. Let's go on. Uh, there is one more interesting rule. Maybe you heard about it. Uh, it is called uh, husband and wife. It is like relations of husband and wife. Uh, the channel uh, of husband, husband channel, it always uh, controls the wife channel, channel of wife. And uh, this rule is mostly connected to the pulse diagnosis. Uh, you can see our wrist on the slide and our wrist has three pulse points uh, which are using in palpation. Uh, and they are called Sun uh, Guan Tsi points. Sun Guan Tsi, three points on the left and three on the right hand. If we are talking about our pulse on the left hand, we should say that pulse on the left hand, it manages uh, the pulse on the right hand. Because in Chinese tradition, left hand is connected to yang category and it is connected to uh, male category, to husband category. So it's more important, it's managing, comparing to the right one. So all channels uh, that are located on the left side, uh, they will be of more important, uh, they will be more significant comparing to channels on the right side. And here you can see uh, some interconnection, which is marked with an arrow here. Uh, it is connection uh, between our heart and lungs. Uh, you see, uh, it is totally the same like C in French tradition and HT for heart in English tradition. So heart uh, is connected to our lungs. 
Uh, and uh, you see the arrow, it goes from the heart to the lungs. So it means that heart um, is main here in this system and uh, heart manages uh, energy distribution. Uh, for example, you can just imagine, uh, heart uh, is strongly connected to our emotions. For example, if we are anxious somehow, our pulse will raise and our, our heart also will beat um, more often, our pulse will raise and at the same time uh, our breathing uh, will be more often, uh, will breathe uh, uh, more often at the same period of time. So uh, it's like uh, physiological basic uh, that shows us this rule and then uh, our heart will feel a rays of energy. Our lungs, uh, they cannot cope with the distribution of the energy. Uh, and uh, in this case, um, it will be a problem uh, for our system, uh, our, our lung system to transport oxygen to all cells of our body uh, and just to uh, make it easier in this case uh, we need uh, to relax we need to relax uh, even if we are not uh, specialists uh, in acupuncture uh, if a person cannot influence points on of the channel because, for example, not sure about the location. Uh, in this case, it's necessary to relax, uh, and uh, even without points, uh, these positive consequences for our channels uh, will help us a little bit. Um, don't remember, by the way, that channels uh, they appear not only at the zone of the location. Uh, they can also manifest themselves distantly. Here um, we should talk about projection areas. For lung channel, um, projection area um, if we are talking about the external course of the meridian, then the projection area will include uh, the whole pectoral muscle, whole pectoral muscle, including a smaller pectoral muscle and greater or major pectoral muscle, and also uh, also uh, intercostal muscles will be involved here. So here you can see projection areas of external course of uh, uh, lung meridian. And talking about projection zones, uh, uh, we can not avoid talking about zones uh, by the Zaharin heads. Uh, the Zaharin and head, uh, they were two um, famous uh, specialists in medicine. They work in different countries and if uh, Zakharin uh, was a Russian scientist then uh, Mr. Head uh, was an English neurologist and uh, why these projection areas are called uh, Zakharin head zones uh, just because these two scientists they uh, opened the location of these zones almost simultaneously and so in medical tradition uh, talking about projection zones now we are using uh, this name, the Harian Head Zones, just by the names of um, scientists who first developed these zones. Talking about projection zones of the lung channel, we should say that uh, we will be uh, at the backside uh, near the trapezoid muscle and uh, by the way pay attention uh, here on the picture um, zones of projection are shown only from one side of the back but uh, 
please pay attention that normally they are located from both sides from the spine both sides uh, and uh, here it's only just the design uh, to avoid uh, too much uh, lines too much figures so projection zones are always located from on the both sides Talking about lungs, it will be on both sides uh, near the trapezoid muscle. If we are talking about the anterior surface of the body, uh, then uh, for the lung channel, uh, projection zone will be in the small area. It will be really small area. Uh, near the triangle of the neck small area of the triangle of the neck. And here we come to the facial zones, to the zones on the face that we can always we can also use for diagnosis and for influencing. Remember that each zone uh, can be used for particular purposes and it will be the most effective way to use each zone for a particular purpose. Um, the, main, uh, the main zone of the lung channel, uh, projection zone of the lung channel uh, on the face uh, will be on your cheeks and it's very easy to find it. Just ask your patient or do it yourself. So to find this main zone uh, you need to blow cheeks and uh, the most outstanding part uh, is will be exactly uh, the part with points to influence. Mm, by the way, if you see some white or red spots uh, in this area, then uh, it will be a sign of pathology uh, connected to the lung disorder. Normally shouldn't be any white or red spots in this area. Uh, the next zone, next zone uh, will be located in the middle between your uh, brows and this point, uh, this zone is connected to the red distribution of energy. Um, by the way, it's uh, not good if there is any wrinkles at this area or if the skin is dim or dull, um, it is supposed to be shining uh, and uh, some classical texts, they say that uh, this zone should shine. If we go on, then uh, we can see other zones uh, connected to our bronchi and uh, it uh, will be about wings of the nose. Mm. If you see some vessels uh, near uh, wings of the nose, that's not rare, then uh, it can be a sign uh, of spasms in bronchi or it can be a sign of uh, allergic reaction. So this zone is connected to our breathing system and also can be a zone for indicating some chronic inflammatory processes uh, in lungs. Um, often this zone uh, can be out, can be can feel some disorders if a person uh, drinks too much alcohol. In this case, this zone will be not plain; it will be rough and unconsolidated. Uh, and it is a sign that shows us that this man drinks too much alcohol and sure should stop using so much of it. Uh, next points, uh, they are marked here uh, like M and F. So it's uh, like male and female zones. Uh, they are different, very different for men and women. They are located uh, near the angle uh, of the jaw 
and uh, on the right side for men and uh, on the left side for women. They are connected to the Minsian system, so-called Minsian system, uh, about uh, which is about projection zones um, at your face. So when you are making some conclusion uh, or making some initial diagnosis of your patient, uh, sure you should uh, pay attention to as much zones as possible. And for example, if you see some changes uh, in more than five zones, uh, no matter whether they are on the face, on the body, or probably on the tongue, um, if the, these specific zones are painful or if they have some visible changes, then it's a symptom, a sign of a disorder in the system. So five or more. If uh, uh, there will be only three or four changes uh, or, or other disorder symptoms, then it will be like doubtful changing or something on the initial level. Uh, and if there are less than three changes, then try to find disorder in other systems. Don't forget because all systems are interconnected. And again, they are coming to the practical point. It's time for us to practice. And here it will be about uh, initiation, about practical start of the lung channel. And first of all, we should uh, give a start to the small circle of energy circulation. Uh, then uh, we should go. We should go on to the anterior middle and uh, posterior middle meridian and to do it we should pay attention to their key points for posterior middle meridian uh, it will be point number three uh, in the channel of uh, small intestine and point number three and for anterior uh, middle meridian, it will be point number seven of the lung channel. Point number seven of the lung channel. So let's initiate the lung channel. How to do it? Uh, normally, uh, Sergei Kasinsov is using clapping clapping so put your hand uh, like like if you'd like to have a handful of something uh, and uh, try and start clapping um, if um, it should be quite not not very strong clapping such flapping of all the channel Sergei uh, Kasinsov supposes it to be more effective if you start from the projection of inner curves and then continue uh, and work with uh, external curves of a channel. You can try to feel it. Uh, just put your hand halfway between the navel and xiphoid process and focus, concentrate at this zone, then start clapping. Uh, when you start clipping, mm, you can sit. So, uh, but uh, if you'd like to influence to initiate all the twelve meridians, then it's better uh, to do it uh, than you are standing. So, when stand up, uh, use the projection of inner course of a channel and put your hand uh, slowly down uh, to the navel. Don't forget to clapping. Don't forget clapping. Clap your navel. Uh, then continue and go up along the middle line, along the middle line of the body, just to the area 
or your throat. Please be careful with your throat. Uh, put your hands like wrapping around, uh, but do your clapping really gently and slightly. Then we are leaving uh, the center of throat and going to the first point of lung channel. Uh, uh, to do it, we are raising our hand, clapping to our shoulder. Then uh, we are working with all of the points that we know now. Uh, we were discussing them today. And then uh, also uh, we are making clapping over the projection of all important points. Uh, you can do it even, mm, even three times. Uh, if you'd like, you may do more clapping, but please remember that uh, your clapping should always be an odd number. And then uh, the final point, uh, we can massage it uh, with our thumb, uh, just like uh, pressing something out, massage it in the way of pressing something out. Then uh, we are moving our palm slowly. Mm. And uh, if you feel that the point uh, was activated, uh, but for example, uh, you know that in this area there is no point according to the some classical text, then anyway work with this area if you feel some activation in this point because there is a mm, phenomenon uh, which is called Oshi points and it's individual points that appear individually and are connected to the congestion of energy. So they uh, they can appear, they can manifest themselves right now and right here for a particular person. So please, in this case, if you just found this point, or she point, put your fingers and knead uh, clockwise. Then palm it along the course of, of the channel and after it please do the same uh, with the second branch. Uh, do everything calmly, take your time and uh, it's better to start on the left side if you are a man and it's better to start on the right side with the right branch if you are a woman as you remember. So. Uh, if you are practicing now, I will say a few words about our plans. Uh, we are planning to have a lecture uh, once per week about each channel. Uh, this lecture will be illustrated the same way as this one that was illustrated about one channel. So if you are interested, uh, sure, you are invited to take part in them. Uh, please, uh, when you are working with the Meridian, uh, you should uh, remember if we are talking about the LAN channel, uh, it is very good for your immune system, good for immunity. Uh, so if you need to use some preventive measures in the period uh, of seasonal activity of viral uh, infections and so on, then it's um, very good to use uh, LAN channel points daily or at least once a week. It will be a good uh, preventive measure and a good, good stimulation for your immunity. And don't forget to start, to give start, to initiate the small celestial circle before working with the LAN channel. It will be also very good. Uh, from the practice, our expert Sergei Kasinca says that uh, a lot of patients have a tension in the lung channel. And uh, why is it so? According to Ayurveda, it will be connected to water dosha. You remember that water dosha is connected to our nervous system. 
correspondingly, if a person is anxious, his energy cannot uh, be redistributed in the right way. So it cannot disperse, cannot scatter to each cell of our body. And this energy just rushes about instead of coming down. Uh, and in this case also um, very good to work with uh, points of lung channel. And in this case, if you have something similar uh, in your patients, uh, please pay attention to the points uh, that are called the element in the element and gap point. Uh, so, point the element and the element and gap point are essential for such conditions. Other points just are up to you, but work with uh, the point of the element and the element and gap point just during one minute for each one, and you will feel uh, that your body reacts, you will feel the energetic response. Uh, you can recommend uh, it not only to your patients, but to your relatives, for example, but please tell them that uh, it's not recommended to do such influence on points uh, more than five minutes. Uh, it's quite easy and remember that even easy movements in the right direction and with the right thoughts, with the right spirit can give us a very good positive uh, influence for our healthy life. Don't forget about uh, the year activity according to the month. Uh, so each channel has its month of activity and uh, in the year circle for lung channel it will be February. It means that there are some days but then biological active points of the channel are most sensible. Uh, they are more sensible in February and even in February there will be particular days and it's possible also to calculate these points. Uh, some specialists can do it. For example, Sirkui Kasinsev can. So, Thank you for your attention. I hope you found something interesting for you today. And please participate in our webinars, share your ideas, your thoughts. We are waiting for your questions. And I wish you sound health and good luck. Thank you very much.